Welcome to another Power in the Word message presented by Pastor Dr. Gerald Parker Sr. Also join us for our noonday Nothing But the Word Bible study starting at 12 noon each Wednesday. Brought to you by Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church Ministries located at 1301 North Magnolia Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Where we say, let's do it God's way. I would like to do this just for a minute. I'm not asking at this time. Don't be shy. But how many of y'all know you're Christians? All the Christians raise your hand. Just those who are Christians. Those Christian men. I didn't say church members. I said Christians. I didn't, I didn't say church members because everybody's a church member, but not a Christian. I hate to say that, but it's the truth. <laughs> how do you know that? The way they act? The follower of Christ. The Christians are follow of Christ. And today we're going to find out something again. That every Christian ought to know. Will you turn to St. John, the 15th chapter, verses 18 to 20? Now, before I go, if you've got a, a red letter version of the Bible, if you would notice all the words there are in red, which signifies that these are the words of Jesus Christ. If the world hate you, huh? Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours also. These are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I remember many years ago, there used to be a commercial on TV called e by E.F. Hutton. And it said, when E.F. Hutton speaks, go ahead, say with me, everybody, everybody, what? everybody listen. And, and, and the reason why, people would say that everybody would listen when E.F. Hutton speak because it has something to do with their finances. I think it was some kind of firm that helps you with your finances and stocks and all of that. But we as children of God, whenever Jesus speaks, all of us should be listening. You did not drive all the way over here to hear what Parker has to say. But you came here today to hear what Jesus have to say. And I want to remind you today that this is, these are the words of Jesus Christ. And this is a part of his farewell discourse. He's saying goodbye to his disciples. He's saying, I'll see you later to his disciples. In just a few hours, the master would be arrested and, that, and by that Friday morning, he'd be hanging on the cross. This is, a, this is a part of his farewell discourse, his farewell commencement address to his disciples. I want to remind you this. Everybody said disciple. Now, now, now he was speaking to these first century disciples. Uh, but I want you to know that although these words were given to his first century disciples, we are now in the 21st century, and just because those disciples are gone, those of us who are followers of Christ, guess what? You also are a disciple. You also are a follower of Christ. Now, you might not have the position of disciple. You might not have the position of an apostle, but by the mere fact that you believe in Jesus Christ and by the mere fact that you are following Christ, you are a disciple. 
the Greek word for disciple, that, it, 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 that first of all, it, it's mimetes. It means uh, someone who imitates Jesus. But then there's another word for uh, disciple, which is akalutheo. It means a follower of Christ. It means someone who's on the same road with Christ, someone who's on the same pace with Christ, someone who's following Christ. So a true disciple is one who imitates Christ, but also someone who's on the same road with Christ. If he's, whatever way he's going, you're going the same way. And I wonder today, what road are you on? Who, who who are you following? Uh, we've got some people. Uh, can, can you really say beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are truly a follower of Christ? Or are you on the fence, not knowing which way to go? Maybe you, maybe you follow the world for a while, and then you follow Christ for a while, and you follow the world for a, for a while, or you follow Christ for a while. Or maybe you just might be a pretender. Maybe you just might be here just to show your face. If, if that's the case, then, then you should join the song of the platters uh, back in the fifth where they were saying, oh, yes, I'm a great pretender. Are you just a pretender? But if you are a true Christian, if you are a true follower of Christ, there's some things that you really need to know. Now, Jesus had already told his disciples in verse 16 of John, the 15th chapter, I chose you. Look at me now. If you are a follower of Christ, you have been chosen by Jesus Christ. Now, I, look, I, want you, I got to want you to get this. He knew that he'd be gone in just a little while. He, even after he rose from the grave, he would just be here another 40 days. Oh, yeah, by the way, can I, can I, can I say this right now? Guess what, Pilgrim Progress? Guess what? I got some news to tell you, and I can't wait to end the sermon. Guess what? Jesus died on the cross. You don't have to get excited because I'm excited. I said he died on the cross for your sins and mine, and I give God the praise. He kept his word, and on that Sunday morning, the third day, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. And that's why we're here, because we are the church of the empty tomb. The tomb is empty. He's not there because if you go, if you could go to Jerusalem and go to the tomb where he was laid down, guess what? He is not there. And because the tomb is empty, we have a full salvation. So he knew he'd be leaving. So he wanted to leave them some words so that while he was gone, they could grab on two of them and be encouraged. And so one of the things he told them in, in John the 15th chapter, verse 16, he said, first of all, I don't want you to get beside yourself. I chose you. He was talking to those first century disciples, but he's talking to you right now. Guess what? He did not choose you because you were so great and you, 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 you were all halfway good. And you, no, he chose you because of his grace and mercy. So he told the disciples, I'm going to be gone. He said, but as you walk around in this world, just remember, I chose you. Don't get beside yourself and think that you, that you hear about you, that you are worthy. I chose you when you were not worthy. I chose you when you were not qualified. And what I like about the Lord, guess what? He, he, he don't choose qualified folks. But he qualifies you after he chooses you. And so he, then he told them this in verse 17. Since I've chosen you and I'm going to be gone, this is one thing I want you to do. This is my commandment to you. Love one another. He's just not simply talking to the first century disciples. He's talking to all of us here. Those of you who raised your hand and said you were a Christian, those of you who said that you were a follower of Christ, he was saying to you right now, we ought to be loving one another. I love you. You love me. And what I, and what I like about this love, guess what? 
there are some things about the other person that you might not like, but he didn't, he says we ought to love one another because what he chose us in our imperfect in, in our imperfect condition. He chose us when we were sinners. He chose us when we were lost. And so there were some things wrong with us when he chose us. So he, although uh, although we are Christians, there's some things about all of us that that's really not right. But we ought to be loving one another anyway. All of us in here ought to be loving one another. He. He said, I, he said, I command you, I tell you this, love ye one another. But then he said this, while you are loving one another, I just told you about your relationship with each other. But let me tell you now about how your relationship would be to the world. While you are loving one another, you better, you better love one another because that's all you have. Because guess what? While you are loving one another, the world will be hating you. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that, did you? Why? The reason why we all love one another, the reason why we all love each other is because the world hates us. Jesus said to the disciples, he said, if the world hate you, that's verse 18, if the world hate you, guess what he was saying? He said, since the world hate you. Look at me now. Look at me. Please look at me. I don't want to turn you off, but he said to this, if you are a disciple, if you are a follower of Christ, the world will hate you. I know you want to be liked by the world. I know you do. You, because if you didn't want to be liked by the world, you wouldn't be going some of the worldly stuff. I know you want to be loved by the world because if you, if you didn't want to be loved by the world, you wouldn't be doing what the world do. But that's not the case. If you are a follower of Christ, Jesus said the world will hate you. But guess what? He said this, although they're hating you, don't be discouraged. Because first of all, he said they hated me first. We got to understand that we are followers of Christ and whatever Christ endured, we also will endure the same thing. So that's the first thing you ought to know, is that you will not be loved by the world. The name, the, 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 the term hate, the Greek word is misio. It means you will be detested. You will be disliked. You will be, people will be hostile toward you. People will be disgusted with you. People can't st see the world cannot stand us because we are followers of Christ. Now, if the world still love you, it's a possibility that you are not really a follower of Christ. So, just in case we might have one person here, you're really trying to be accepted by anybody and everybody, and you want to be liked, you want to be loved, you want to be lifted up and loved by everybody. But if you are a child of God, the world will hate you. Now, this is the point. What do we mean when we say world? We ought to love one another, but while we are loving one another, the world will be hating us. What do we mean by the world? Here, this is it. When Jesus said world, uh, the Greek word that is cosmos, he wasn't saying, he wasn't talking about the physical world, the trees and the flowers, and he wasn't talking about that. And he really wasn't talking about the people, but he was talking about the world system, the system of the world. Anything that's unlike God, anything that's against God, the world means wickedness and evilness and uh, 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 living their own way, living their own standards. Anything that's opposite of God is considered the world. Evil, uh, sexuality, self-centeredness, all these things deal with worldly, earthly things. And so the world here represents Anything or anyone that's against God and Jesus Christ. So if they, if so, so if you are for Christ, the world is against Christ. If you are for God, the world is against God. And so those of us who are for Christ and for God, they will hate you because they hate God. 
So don't expect to walk around here in this world uh, living a holy life and still be loved by the world. And since I'm on that subject, look at, look at me now. Look at me now. That also means that if you are not, if you, if, if you see, some of us want to be loved by the world, to be accepted by the world, because if we didn't, we wouldn't go to some of the worldly things. You want to be seen while the world is having fun. It's not enough fun being a Christian. See, that's the point. Jesus did not save us for happiness. He saved us for holiness. Ooh wee I need to write that down myself. You were not called. He did not save you to be happy. He saved you to be holy. And if you are living holy, the world will hate you. Now, why will the world hate you? This verse 19. He says in verse 19, if you were, oh, I got it now. The reason why the world will hate us because he says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. The world loves its own. But the reason why that the world hate a child of God is because we are not of the world. We are in the world, but guess what? We are not of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, because you are not of the world. Guess what? We are not of the world. Then, then he says this, the reason why we're not of the world. Now, we used to be of the world. Now, yeah, yeah. All of us got a pass now. All of us got a, uh, all of us have a pass here. It, it, there's no one here that don't have a pass. Thank God for grace. I said, thank God for grace and mercy. Well, it, 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 but I, you know what I wish we could do? I wish I had a, a time machine where. We could just show what we used to do and what, how we were before we were saved. I'd be the last one. I'm serious. In, in every situation, every place that you've ever gone, everything you've ever done before, before grace found you. That's why you ought to be shouting right now because... Because of his amazing grace, he's brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Hallelujah here today. He says, you are not of the world. Why aren't you of the world? Because we used to hold hands with the world. We used to do what the world did. We, we used to love the world. But guess what? Jesus said, because I have chosen you out of the world. And the reason why the world hates you because you first belong to the world, but here comes Jesus. Guess what? You didn't find Jesus. Jesus found you, and he took you out of the world, called you out of darkness into his mother's light. And because of that, because of, you are now different. You see, when you are saved, the first thing the world will say, oh, you changed. You think you're better than all of us. No, that, it's not the matter that, 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 you are, that, that, that you are different, that you think they are better, that you think you are better. It's because you are a new creature now. If any man be in Christ and woman, you are a new creature. All things are passed away because all things become new. You, 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 and, they, they, and, and the world would say, oh, you've changed. You don't want to hang out with these anymore. You don't want to smoke with me. You don't want to lay down with me like you used to do. Why? Because I've been changed. I don't, I don't do that stuff no more. Why? Because I've been changed. I've been chosen to live a life of holiness, and I know you don't like holiness. And I'm going to tell you right now, my brothers and sisters, just stop doing some of the things you're doing right now, and they'll hate you. Somebody say, I ain't doing nothing. You lying. The world hates your light. You see, we are now, uh, Jesus is the light of the world. And, and now because you let your light shine, people, you know, I'm going to tell you what happens. If you've been, I got to go. When you've been in the dark for a long, in darkness for a long time, then it's been dark, 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 and all you see is darkness. When you see some light, the first thing you do is you squint your eyes first until you get used to it. That's why people try to ignore you. That's why they try to reject you because you're letting your light shine. And, shine, and light exposes other things that's dirty. 
That's one reason why the world hates us, because we let our light shine. We have joy. We have peace. And they see that and exposes how bad they are. Let me tell you like this. Since you have believed in Jesus Christ, you are no longer a citizen of the world. You're now a citizen of heaven. I know you don't want to hear that. And so with that, in a sense, yeah, I, I live in Arkansas. I live in Arkansas, and, and in a sense, I'm a citizen. In a sense, I'm a citizen of, uh, of the United States, uh, technically. But really, I'm a citizen of two, two cities, United States and heaven. And now I got to understand, now, since I'm a citizen of the United States and heaven, then there are some things that heaven does not allow. And I got to determine now, if I'm a citizen of heaven and the Lord is my master, and, and so I've got to, as a child of God, i got to understand, whatever the world says is good, if heaven says it's bad, I'm going to leave it alone. Y'all don't want it. This is old-fashioned stuff. If the world says it's all right, but, 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 but if heaven says it's not all right, guess what? As a child of God, we should not partake in and be a part of it because it's a guess what heaven says. We are now, we used to be, uh, a part of the world, but now we're simply aliens in the world. We are now ambassadors. I'm reminded of a story that I got close to, uh, about this fellow that he was an ambassador from another country and he visited America. And while he was walking around, he was from another country. And while he was walking around, the, uh, the fellows that had him there, he was an ambassador from another foreign country. And they said, Let's go to the strip club. He said, Not allowed. Well, let's go down to the saloon and take some drinks. He said, not allowed. And they said, what do you mean? Everything that we told you to do, you said not allowed. You're an American now. He said, yeah, I'm an American now, but where I come from, it's not allowed. You got to understand as you live in this world that some things are not allowed in heaven. And if it does not give God the glory, if God can't get the praise and glory, you need to stay away from that stuff and stick with Jesus Christ. And you got to say, not allowed. When you are approached with when you are approached with temptation and trials and tribulation trials and, and, and you tempted to do something wrong, you gotta say to yourself, it is not allowed. My God says it's not allowed. And since he says it's not allowed, I'm not gonna partake in it. By the grace of God, I'm gonna walk away from this situation. You know what? Are you a secret service Christian? I'm serious. I'm serious. Are you really? Are you a secret service Christian? Undercover? Because no one, you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. So you try to act like the world. You try to dress like the world. You try to do like the world. You try to, and that way, nobody will, you don't want to embarrass anybody. You don't make anybody feel bad. So you just try to go with the flow, you know. But Monday through Saturday, you do your thing, and then on Sunday, you have the holy look. And when you get around your so-called friends that are not, that in the world, you still you act the way they act. I've come to tell you today that you will be hated by the world. Verse 20, everybody say verse 20. Then he, Jesus said this. He said, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. In other words, if I went through trials and tribulations, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. You are not greater than I am because if you're greater than I am, you'd be the master and I'd be the slave, but you are not greater than I am. You are following me, and since you are following me, whatever I'm going through, you're going to go through the same thing. Look at look at it. Look, come here, come here, come here right now. If Jesus was persecuted, we're going to be persecuted. If Jesus had to suffer, guess what? You're going to have to suffer. Why? Because we are not above our master. 
So I've got good news for you as we close this message today. You will be hated. You will be persecuted. You will be dejected and rejected by the world. But I've come to tell you here, you can't escape being persecuted. Now, they got different ways of doing it. But Philippians 1.29 says, For unto you it is given in behalf of Christ, not only to believe, but also to suffer for his sake. If you are not suffering, you must be a secret servant Christian. Matthew 5, 10 and 12 says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you false for my sake. He says, guess what? When you are persecuted, you ought to rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Guess what? When you're going through, you ought to give God the praise and say, I thank God I'm going through right now. I'm being persecuted for the Christ's name, but I give God the glory because God get the glory. My, 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 my Savior was was persecuted, he suffered, and I'm glad I'm able to share this suffering with Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Then he says this, in this world you shall have tribulations. That's it, in this world you're going to have it. This is really not a clap, clap type sermon because Guess what? We got to suffer. But the good news is, the good news is, guess what? While Jesus was facing the cross, he was going to face his foul persecution while he was hanging on the cross. But Hebrew 12, 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are consumed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, uh uh-oh, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is before. We'll all be running this race that before. Then he said this, looking under, everybody say looking under Jesus. We'll all be looking, looking, un, looking under Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, and he endured the cross. Jesus, although he was going to the cross, he had joy. Why? Because he knew that once he died on the cross, he'd, he'd rise early that Sunday morning, and right now, guess where he is? He sitting on the right hand of the Father. In the midst of your suffering, in the midst of your persecution, just remember this. I don't mind suffering for Christ. Because one day, I will see him face to face.